Well, hello everybody. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday night, which means it is Facebook Live time here in Atlanta, Georgia. So, I hope you are having a good weekend, and that I'm hoping you dried out a little bit. We actually didn't have any rain today, so so it's been nice. Um, give me a half a second, and let's see if we're uh, transmittalating over here. I'm going to check my computer as I start to see people come on. It looks like we've got a couple of folks. Hi, Nan. Hi, Lenny. Appreciate you watching. All right. It looks like we might be going out. Maybe. I'm looking a little frozen here. I'm going to refresh again to see what we get. All right. Not Okay, there we go. Now it looks about right. That looks a mole better. We've got some folks coming on. Hi, Jana. Hey, Karen. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Diane and Rosie and Kathy. Appreciate you coming on tonight. All right, so this little card um, actually is made with a stamp set that I, I have some stamp sets in almost every catalog that I call flyover sets, which are sets that are easy to overlook. Um, Hey, Tanya. So either you miss them entirely when you go through the catalog on your first or twelfth time, but when you finally do see it, there's a tendency with some of these, I think, to go, eh, I don't really need that. That's not all that fun. And to be quite honest, I actually did the same thing with this one. This is Label Me Bold, and it's a little, um, it's a little simplistic and minimalistic for me, but as I used it for this card, I really got to where I like how these sentiments are easily cut with the rectangle stitch dies, which I used today for this, and or you could even fussy cut them really, really easily. So, um, see, Karen, that's what I'm saying is it's really easy to miss. Hi, Mary. Hi, Patricia and Jerry. Appreciate you joining. Uh, so anyway, let me show you what I did to take a flyover set and and give it a little bit of a pop. And you can see here, perhaps you can see, you can tell, this is the Golden Honey Specialty DSP, which is back in stock. Yay! And you can get it for free with a $50 purchase through the end of celebration. So let's go ahead and look on the inside, and you can see I've just used actually three different sentiment uh, images and the stars. And this is, uh, the front is embossed with shimmer black embossing um, powder. And I also used the stitched stars dies. I used this star, so it's certainly not the biggest, but it's far from the smallest, um, to cut out a vellum star to add just a little bit of a punch. Um, I was aiming for a masculine bent card, so this is where I started. Okay, so let's go ahead and, well, let's get started, shall we? Um, I've got all the card cuts already ready to go, and they will all be in tomorrow's blog post, so you don't need to worry about anything. I'm going to set this here for just a second. Hi, Debbie. Right? I'm telling you, Kathy, that's the thing. Hey, Jean and um, Jan and Bill, I appreciate you joining. Hi, Lynn from southern New Jersey. So I started with the uh, this uh, black and white stripe. Like I said, I was going for a masculine kind of a bent card, so not real frilly. And this is for a paper player's challenge, which has kind of a striped background, and, and you'll see that tomorrow. So what I did is I started with uh, a my light pumpkin pie Stampin' Blend, and I'm gonna use the brush sign. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to be sure that instead of scrubbing like this for this card, I want you to do long, straight, lines. So I did four of the pumpkin pie stripes. The uh, paper players challenge that we have is three large stripes and I interpreted that by changing colors. All right, so I'm, I colored this with my light pumpkin pie. Like I said, I did four of these stripes in light pumpkin pie. And this is just my normal size card front three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Okay. Hi, Eunice, I appreciate you joining and glad you could come live. Hey, Robbie, hi, Donna, appreciate you joining. Next, I have the Dark Daffodil Delight. So both my pumpkin pie and my old olive are light and the Daffodil Delight is dark. I just liked how that worked out better. 
and I'm going to just do three of these. There wasn't an even number of stripes. So I made the arbitrary design decision to do four of the top and bottom colors and three in the middle. So there's the three with the Daffodil Delight. That's the dark blend. And then finally, I've got my light Old Olive blend for the final four stripes. All right. Now you gotta remember, masculine cards aren't always so easy because I like to embellish, as you are fully aware. And for some reason, people seem to think that having extra decorations on masculine cards makes them not masculine. So it's not easy for me to do. All right, here's one more stripe. Oops, whoopsie. All right, I don't know why I stopped talking right there. I might have just had a little zone moment, a little zone moment, okay. All right, hey Jean, hi Jennifer, Melissa, appreciate you joining. So I'm going to put this on a basic black mat and this is exactly how my card went, okay? I turned this over to put my liquid glue on it and I went, oh my God. Look how cool that is from this side. And so I looked at it for the longest time and I was like, oh my goodness. So then I went back and I thought, well, I'll just fix some of these not so great stripes there. So I went back and I played with my, my uh, old olive a little bit because I'd been less than smooth with it, even though I know I just told you what to do. Do as I say, not as I do. And this was about the time I completely changed up my card. I decided, and boy, I really debated a long time. Which side should be the front? Which side should be the front? And I finally decided to do both. So, so I ended up with this card as well. And you can see they are identical designs. I mean, truly identical. It's just opposite sides of each other. And I like them both equally much. And I think that's so cool. They're the, actually, they're the same exact paper, right? So you, you really, you're really only using this one sheet of paper. So I really was um, inadvertently tickled by how well this came out. So now I'm going to see if I can get this settled down. Yep, I think it'll be okay. We're gonna use that side because I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some rhinestones on this one. You can't make me not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put some rhinestones on this one. All right. Now, thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate that. Okay, so I'm gonna actually switch over and we're going to use the bees and the flowers on the front. So I think that will be fun. Now you could obviously use another set besides the label me bold. If you wanted to, you could use, um, I think some of the layered with kindness sentiments and those, um, punches would be cool on the front of this card like this. And I'm giving you some tips and hints for the challenge that you're going to see tomorrow. Okay, so let's set that aside for a minute. And I've got a 2 and 5 8 square inch piece of uh, Whisper White. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, splotch image right here. And I'm going to stamp it three times on this small piece of Whisper White. And we're going to... Oh, Debbie, yuck. Ugh. You're right, Eunice, you got to have some rhinestones. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some pumpkin pie at the top. And on this image, I'm stamping off once before I stamp the card. Okay. And we're going to stamp off. 
and then just stamp near the top first in the in the pumpkin pie clean my stamp image and then we'll do daffodil delight Yeah, this B paper, I'm so glad it is back. I am so glad that it is back. And we'll stamp that in the middle. And I did that full strength. I didn't mean to. Don't be like me. Stamp it off once. It looks okay because it's the Daffodil Delight, but if I screw that up in the Old Olive, it's going to be very, very noticeable. All right. So finally, just ink again in Old Olive. Stamp off once. And stamp the bottom like so. Okay. We can set that aside. Get our ink pads closed up. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give this 49 degrees and lots of sun. Good. Yay. Glad to hear that, Jean. Okay. I'm giving it a little rub with my embossing buddy. And I'm going to use the stars image. And I'm going to stamp it three times in Versamark ink in the white spaces. And you don't have to turn it if you don't want to, but you certainly can like I just did. Okay. And we're going to emboss it in shimmer black embossing powder. Let the magic begin. Now, at my last team meeting, we talked about things that we like to have on our stamping table that are not stampin' up tools, but are things that we really like to use. And so one of those is a brush. And I do that because even though I did that, I, I just kind of like to make sure that most of my powder is gone except for where I want it. Because once you emboss it, it's kind of there. Not very easy to get it gone. Just throwing that out there. Okay, it's going to get loud. Sorry, hang tight. We're going to emboss this. Now, if you have a heat tool like from Stampin' Up, our Stampin' Up heat tool has two settings. The setting number one is for drying ink or um, setting ink easier, um, quicker. And then setting number two, which is what I'm on now, is for heat embossing. And you just kind of want to hold it steady over your image. And you can watch the magic happen. You'll see it actually transform right before your eyes. Hey, Amy. Kathy, I'm glad you got more of the B paper. That's awesome. Embossing truly is the magic of the stamping world. Right before our eyes, it becomes beautiful. Now, I don't know if you can really see that. I'm going to hold it up. Can you see the shimmer? How that shimmers? It's hard to tell, but there are little specks of shimmeriness right in there. All right, I'm going to set that aside for just a second uh, to let that cool off. Because, you know, embossing, when it's still hot, you can, you can tap it and it's tacky and it'll kind of wiggle around. So here in my handy dandy ramekin, which is my storage device for my parts, I have my vellum car, um, star all ready to go. And then I've also cut a couple of sentiments. Now these were stamped in Whisper White. No, not stamped in Whisper White. <laughs> stamped on Whisper White in Tuxedo Black Memento Ink. Now... To cut these, I used the most narrow of the stitched rectangle dies. But I didn't need that long. You can see, here's an example. You can see that's way too long. So here's how to do this. First, run the sentiment through uh, with one, just like this, okay? So you're gonna cut it like that. That wasn't it, obviously. You're gonna cut it like that and end up with your too long sentiment. Then you're going to turn it around and you're going to place the other end to where you need your length and you're going to kind of, especially with this kind of a die where you've got like these little sprockets in the back, you're going to wiggle it just enough to get it hooked into the sprockets. So it is now hooked in which means that the sprocket 
dies are going to cut the sprockets again correctly. And then you just run it back through and you end up with this. And what's kind of cool is you end up with a few other little label die thingy who's it's perfectly stitched and waiting to be used for a future sentiment. Thanks, Jean. I know, Robbie, right? It's so cool. The, the stamping, the uh, embossing is the best. Okay, so that's how to do that. That's how to take any of these rectangle dies and make them work for what you need. Make your tools work for you, people. Not again ya. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now that this is dry is let's get it adhered to the, it's basic black sprockets. That's correct, that is the technical term. Um, I'm going to need you all to spend your $99 and get your $125 worth of goodies and a mini trimmer and some extra paper and an extra free stamp set. And then you are allowed to use the term sprockets for the stitched rectangle dies. I'm just saying. You can't use it until then. It's an industry term. So you need to be a demonstrator. All right. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and pop this onto our card front. Where are you, card front? Oh, that's not a card front. That's not a card front. Here's a card front. Okay. Now, you have two choices. You could actually, you could do like I did, which is you keep colors to colors in your, in your order, or you could, I could have done it like that. And I looked at that, and then I looked at this, and then I looked at that, and then I thought, nope, I like this. The symmetry is good. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop that up. Thank you, Robbie. Hey, Linda. I'm going to use some more of my um, massacred Stampin' Dimensionals. I mean, I've killed them. I might as well use them, right? Actually, I hate to say it out loud because Amy's here and she's going to gloat because that's just how she rolls. I'm actually getting used to this. I feel a little less guilty every time I use it, but there's a different guilt. There's the guilt of all of those Stampin' Dimensional workers that I have put out of business. Potentially put out of their homes. Their children aren't eating, it's not good. Because around the world it is known, Mary Deathridge is using half Stampin' Dimensionals. Wah, wah, not good. I mean, massacred. See, <laughs> Karen, now you're doing it too. Eventually it will sweep the world and that will be the fall of the Dimensional Empire. Yes. Yes, I'm still on the dark side. That's right. But I said I was going to do it for at least three weeks, right? Because that's how you have to do to get used to a new habit. Okay. So I just centered that more or less centered, you know, ish, like so. Okay, 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 okay. Now we're going to make a bow, and I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? Because I don't want a whole lot of thick stuff right in the middle, so I don't want a bow with a big knot in the middle. So this is what I did. This is what I did right here. I took a couple of glue dots, and I sticked them down in the middle of my panel. Like, yay. And then I took some of the black twine from the Clubhouse Baker's Twine Combo Pack, and I made like a little figure eight doo-ha. Okay, so I got some, I got a little tail over here, and I, I did it a little long, figuring I could cut it down. And then I wrapped a loop, and then I wrapped a loop, and caught that other dimension, uh, liquid, that, 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 that's a glue dot. <laughs> Easy for me to say. And then I let it come down like this, and I cut it. So I have what will look like a bow, but it doesn't have quite so much silly uh, thickness under there. Okay, so now I'm going to dry fit my star and then I'm going to dry fit my sentiments like so. And I kind of wanted the sentiments to cover up the middle of where that figure eight was. Okay, so with it on there like that, now that Mary's using partial dimensionals, it's <laughs> no, no, I think there's going to be a very hot place that freezes over before that happens. I'm way more likely to keep using half dimensionals than it is that Amy would, you know, definitely like fussy cutting. Okay, so I'm going to just adhere my sentiments to my star with liquid glue. 
like so. And really what I'm looking for here is for these to be straight with each other because since I haven't hooked the, my star down, I can do whatever I need to to make them straight when I get there. Does that make sense? Okay. Now I'm going to take a couple of dimensionals and I'm going to stick them. I know that I've got a sentiment going to cover right there. And I know I've got one right there, so I'm going to stick another dimensional there. What I'm doing is making sure my dimensionals are under the sentiments. Why am I not putting the dimensionals on here? Because I need the dimensionals to not be where the twine is. Does that make sense? If the dimensionals, let me get that cover off. If the dimensionals, for example, if there was one right there, it wouldn't sit down correctly, right? So it's easier actually to just put it like that and say, okay, I could have a, a dimensional right there. And it would be covered up and also not interfering. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? It's a little different than normal. So I'm gonna take these covers off. And then here's the most persnickety part of the whole thing is I want a glue dot on the top of that twine right there. And that's a little hard to get it to stick, but I'm going to persist. I want it badly enough. Okay, so now it's just a matter of sticking my star and sentiment on. And you can see because I used dry fitting on and off and on and off and put my dimensionals where I knew they'd be covered, everything fits, everything lays right, and nothing is showing. And really folks, that's it for the card front. Now, for a woman's or a more feminine look, you could absolutely put some rhinestones on there. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna put one right here. And I'm gonna put one right here. And I'm gonna put one. Come here, silly dimensional. No, that's not a dimensional. See, you've got me thinking dimensionals all the time now. This is a rhinestone. I know because it's sparkly. And then I'm gonna put one right here. Okay, now I feel better. Whew. I made two cards in one day with no rhinestones. Holy moly! Yes, these half dimensionals are in fact awesome for this use in particular. All right, so there's my card front. I'm gonna set that aside for just a second. And I have a regular old Whisper White. And I'm going to take my splotch again. And I'm going to ink it with Old Olive and I'm gonna stamp that off once, twice, three times a lady and then again with my tuxedo black Lynn you should definitely try using some half dimensionals but you kind of have to commit to three weeks so that it becomes a habit and doesn't just make you cringe every time you use it okay now I'm gonna use um, congratulations and it's kind of cool. These little sets are kind of cool, but I have to wipe off my finger where I just stuck it in my tuxedo black. Okay. Yes. And then I'm going to just line it up and give it a press and hold it so that the ink can get transferred into the cardstock. Look how fun that is where that, that splot shows through like it's a window. Isn't that cool? I love it. See, it's like I said, this stamp set, I really did kind of poo-poo it to start with. And now I really like it. I love these little sentiments quite a bit. Oh, I didn't, I still needed that tuxedo black. Come back here, tuxedo black. Come back here. I'm going to stamp a couple of stars, some stars. No bars, just stars. Next to my sentiment. Okay. And fortunately, I made a little boo-boo, so that gives me a valid excuse to use another rhinestone. 
So I'm just going to cover that up cleverly like so. Actually, because I've used one, I'm going to use three because I can, because I want to, because I like them, because they're shiny. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to mat that on basic black with some liquid glue. Well, see, you shouldn't you feel guilty like using the self-checkout. When you use the self-checkout, even though, yes, in fact, you are putting people out of work, so don't worry about that. Really, they ought to be sending you a 1099. They ought to be paying us for you, doing their job for them. My theory is, is places like that, they wouldn't hire extra folks anyway if they didn't have this self-checkout. It would just be way longer lines at the regular registers. That's my theory. But I do get tired of self-checking, especially when things aren't marked and the codes don't come up and you have to turn that little light on and you wait for lady number one who is going to, you know, not pay attention to show up. Oh, it just makes me insane sometimes. Okay, now I'm using a Whisper White card base. Um, why did I use Whisper White? I don't know, because I think because um, I couldn't decide which of the other colors to use for card base, but you surely could. I would use, you know, Old Olive or Pumpkin Pie or Daffodil Delight. You could absolutely do that. Also, of course, you could use completely different colors entirely. Um, I use these for a challenge, and I think they're a good way to, to kind of convey masculine. So it had a double whammy of goodness. All right, liquid glue, you are done for a momento. And let's see, here we go. Some more of my little dimensional peoples. So we got rid of lots of employees when they went to self check store, save on payroll taxes. Yep, yep. Good for you, Mary. I don't blame you. I do self-check when I get to Walmart and there's one register and 510 people standing at it. Then I figure, I'm sorry, whoever you are at register one, I, I got to get out of here. So I do. But I, I don't look for it as a regular thing. But God, Walmart is, I mean, Walmart, I'm picking on Walmart and they certainly are not the only place that does self-checkout, but... They really have trouble with their, with staffing or something. I don't know. It just seems like no matter how busy it is, there's not enough registers open ever. I think that's the almighty dollar talking, huh? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now... Just to be sure I'm putting it on the right spot, the right place, the right time, and as straight as I can make it. <clears throat> All right, so there is a more feminine version of my masculine cards. And we're going to do a quick envelope flap and envelope. So, fortunately, I have this here. Uh, yes, staying out of Walmart is absolutely the very best option of all. I'd rather take a beating almost. But there are some things that are significantly cheaper. And I go there. I try to go. It's really, that's one of the major advantages of being retired. I can pick what seems to be the best time to go to Walmart. <laughs> There's not a good time. Please notice I did not say a good time. Okay, so I'm in Old Olive and I stamped off once for the front. There's never a good time to go to Walmart. There's just times that are less horrendous than others. And so as a retired person, I no longer have to be thinking, oh my gosh, I can't go to Walmart except on the weekend, which is, oh my Lord, that's horrible. All right, I'm going to put a few little stars in there. And that's the card, the front of my envelope. I agree that shopping at Walmart can be very painful. The cards that is. I understand. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kathy. I, fi I got that you loved the cards. That's good. Okay, here we go. Now, I did my envelope 
uh, flap the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll start at this top. And I'm just gonna color this real quick. And this is kind of cool because if you use this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm just gonna do two of each. If you did this side front, then you're ready to go. If you did the other side front, you're still ready to go. Cool, right? Yeah, we'll do two of each color. I think there'd be a lot of fun color combinations with this kind of a card. Don't you? I think the run. Pickup, huh? Wow, that the whole fruits and vegetables would be probably the biggest reason that I would be hesitant about that. Do y'all buy your meat at Walmart? I don't. I won't buy meat at Walmart. Um, I just I like my Publix meat. I might occasionally buy like a roast there, but I certainly won't ever buy a hamburger. Blah. Okay, and finishing off with light. I don't know why I did that. That was completely stupid. See what I just did there? But that's okay. We're going to act like I meant to do that. I totally meant to pick up the old olive. I got to thinking about fruits and vegetables and meat and stuff. It's all right, though. It's all good. It's all good. It's so good. And could I pull out another piece of that paper and redo it? Yes. Am I going to? No. Because only us chickens know that I meant for that to be Old Olive. We're the only ones. Costco for meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do buy meat at Costco. A lot. And Sam's has good meat, too. We've been impressed with Sam's meat, and their prices are frequently cheaper than Costco. We've finally, after a thousand million years, we have got a Sam's on one corner, and across the street is a Costco, and it's 13 miles from us instead of having to go, like, take a day trip to the other side of Atlanta to go to Costco. So now we can, we can be discerning and pick whichever has the better prices for what we're, what we're looking to do. So here we go, folks. Here is our card for today. And I now have a nice little set of uh, congratulation cards for using the Golden Honey DSP and the little flyover set, which I would like you guys to unfly over called Label Me Bold. All right, guys, I will see you hopefully on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for a YouTube video. Be sure to go out and subscribe to my channel if you would so that you get a notification and you'll be able to join me then. All right, guys, I appreciate you taking part of your weekend with me. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.